Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. Did I say polynomial? Is it? We'll find out. Okay, so we have 8x cubed minus 6x minus 1 is equal to 0 and we're looking for values of x. In this case, we're not restricting it to real numbers, we're going to be looking for all kinds of solutions. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, but since I don't want to keep this video too long, I'll be brief with one of the solutions and the other one I'll completely give you the solutions and end up with that one. Okay, let's start with our first method. What is our first method? Okay, our first method could be longer because it's going to talk about the cubic formula pretty much. But don't worry, I'm not going to give you the full-blown formula for cubic because that is way too complicated. That's just a monster. So, but I'll give you, I'll lead you in the right direction. Hopefully you can take from uh, something from here. So, what does this first method involve? So first of all, I'll, I'll start with something you already know, or you should know, okay, if you're dealing with algebra especially. So I'm going to be expanding a plus b quantity cube from, what is that called, binomial theorem? Yeah, so, but instead of writing it like just like normal, I'm going to write it in such a way that I put the a cube plus b cube together, and then the other separate, because, you know, a lot of times with factoring, this is especially very helpful in algebra, so, and this is also good for the cubic. Now, what am I going to do? I'll put everything on the same side. Hopefully, you'll get to see what I'm, you know, trying to get at. a plus b quantity cubed minus 3ab times the quantity a plus b minus. Now, I'm going to treat that as a quantity and write that stuff in parentheses like this and then set the whole thing equal to zero. Great. Now, this is going to turn into a cubic equation. How? Let's find out. Well, if I go ahead and do some substitution here, obviously, I can go ahead and turn it into a cubic. But before I do that, let me go back to my original equation and then make it kind of look like this one. Okay? So what is my original one? 8x cubed minus 6x minus 1 is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and write it a little differently because this is not monic. Remember, we talked about monic equations in other videos. Monic means the coefficient of x cubed in this case is supposed to be 1. And we can make it easy. Look. We can write it as 2x quantity cubed minus 3 times the quantity 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. And if you do the substitution 2x equals y, then you got a monic equation, which is y cubed minus 3y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, what is good about this equation is twofold. One, it's monic. Second, we don't have a y squared. So it's kind of like a reduced cubic, which is easier to solve. Now, what am I going to do from this point on? Well, if you compare this equation to that one, you'll hopefully know what I'm talking about. Here, I'm going to be making another substitution. As you know, substitution is very powerful in math, and we should use that, use that as much as we can. So if you replace a plus b with y, then you're going to see why I'm doing this. You'll get y cubed minus 3aby minus a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 0. Now, you can go ahead and compare these two equations, right? And then see what happens. Well, if they are the same, then we can safely say that 3ab is equal to 3. Like right here, you can see that, right? 3ab is equal to 3, and this is equal to 1. That gives you what? A system of equations. Let's go ahead and write that down. And interestingly, while solving the cubic, you end up with a quadratic system. Well, does this look quadratic? Let's find out. Well, AB is equal to 1, right? Obviously. And from here, I can safely say that A cubed B cubed is equal to 1. And in the equation A cubed plus B cubed is equal to 1, I can just go ahead and isolate B cubed and write it as 1 minus A cubed. Now, go ahead and take a look at this system. Isn't that quadratic? It is, because in the first equation, if you replace b cubed with 1 minus a cubed, you're going to be getting something like a cubed times the quantity 1 minus a cubed is equal to 1. And one more substitution, bear with me because I'm almost done with this. You can just go ahead and say, hey, you know what, let a cubed equals u. I don't know. Something like that. And you'll be getting something like u minus u squared is equal to 1. And finally, u squared minus u plus 1 is equal to 0. Unfortunately, this equation has no real solutions, but no worries. You can easily solve this. And if you do, you're going to be getting something like negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. But b squared minus 4ac is negative here. As you know, this is going to give you root 3i over 2. 
1 plus minus root 3 over i is the u value. And now you're going to take the cube root of that and you'll find the a value. And then your b is the reciprocal of a. Remember that. You're going to find the b value. And then y is going to equal 2x. But of course, before that, we can safely say that y is equal to a plus b. That was our assumption, right? We said that y is equal to a plus b here. So you're just going to replace the a and b with the values. You're going to find the y value and then set it equal to 2x and you're going to find the x value. Lots of lots of work, right? That's pretty long. But I gave you the idea. Hopefully you can take it from here. And now let's go ahead and talk about our second method. Okay. Our second method involves a different approach. Of course, these two methods have some type of intersection, but here's what it is. Now, if you look at our original equation, what is our original equation? Well, 8x cubed minus 6x minus 1 is equal to, how about I put the 1 on the right-hand side and then divide both sides by 2. Now, you might be asking, like, why is he doing all that? How would you know what to do in this case, right? Well, if you're familiar with trigonometry, you will probably think about this because what does the left-hand side look like? Look at this, 4x cubed minus 3. What does that 4 and the 3 tell you? Well, the, it should tell you the triple angle formula. Why? Because we do know, or we should know that, this is definitely a must, I think if you're dealing with trigonometry especially, cosine of 3 alpha can be written as 4 times cosine cubed alpha minus 3 times cosine alpha. There you go. You got it. So if I replace x with cosine alpha in this equation right here, then I should be getting something like 4 cosine cubed alpha minus 3 cosine alpha is equal to 1 half. And 1 half is not a coincidence, of course, it's the cosine of something. And now the left-hand side becomes cosine of 3 alpha, and the right-hand side becomes the cosine of pi over 3. And in this case, of course, we're looking for the smallest angle so that we can kind of proceed with the solution, right? We're first looking for the you know, the smallest angle that satisfies this. And then we're just going to set up two equations. You can also write it in one, but I'd like to uh, split it up and kind of branch off. So one of my solutions is going to look like 3 alpha is equal to pi over 3. Obviously, that's clear, right? But you can also add multiples of 2 pi to this. So you can basically add n times 2 pi where n is an integer. And the second solution is going to be similar to this. But let's go ahead and work this one out and then we're going to worry about the other one. So you can go ahead and divide both sides by 3 and this should give you something nicer. This is the general solution. Okay, now by replacing n with certain values such as n equals 0, n equals 1, and n equals 2, you're going to be getting three values. Let's go ahead and find them. So alpha can be pi over 9, or alpha can be pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 3, which is 6 pi over 9, which is 7 pi over 9, is the alpha value from here. And the third one is going to be, the third one is going to be 13 pi over 9. Obviously, they are 2 pi over 3 apart, so you can just figure that out. There's a pattern. Okay, cool. Now, these are all the solutions, but they're not the x values. What is x equal to? Well, remember that? We said that let x equal cosine of alpha, right? So that's going to be my back substitution. So let's go ahead and find the x values from here. The x value is just going to be cosine pi over 9. And then from here, x is going to be cosine of 7 pi over 9. And then finally, x is going to be cosine of 13 pi over 9. And this gives us three solutions, as is expected. And all these solutions are real. And we are expecting a cubic, you know, may have complex solutions. But if you go ahead and graph this, you'll see that it has three real solutions. Now, what about the second part, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. Well, we said that there are two branches. And the second branch basically comes from here. You, you're going to subtract or negate pi over 3, which is negative pi over 3, but you're going to add 2 pi to it before you divide because otherwise you're going to get it wrong. But anyways, 2 pi minus pi over 3 is going to be 5 pi over 3. So we're going to be getting 5 pi over 3 plus n times 2 pi over, you know, n times 2 pi, and then we're going to divide both sides by 3. But here's the thing. When you do that, let me tell you something to save some time. You're going to be getting the exact same values. Why? Because when you find the cosine of all these angles that arise from this equation, you're going to get the, basically the same cosine value. You're basically hitting the same values because obviously a cubic, a polynomial cubic, cannot have more than three solutions, right? So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.